Support for the Pursuit of Music podcast is brought to you by Brooke Mays Music. Brooke Mays Music is a family of retail specialists who unify their professional skills and talents in order to focus on the needs of music education and educators. Their main goal is to increase the number of active instrumental music makers. Their objectives include, number one, maintain strong working relationships for the lifespan of the music maker's career, and number two, encourage the love and participation in music, and finally, number three, being an active advocate for support of music in the schools. The voice of music education drives our actions. Thank you so much to our sponsors, Brooke Mays Music. All right, we are live on Facebook. Joined by Mr. Ben Nobles. Um, apologies to everyone. It's just going to be the two of us. So you're going to have to, I guess, just put up with just the two of us. Yeah, you're muted. Yeah. Technical difficulties. You know, 28 episodes in, I still don't have it figured out. But I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say, I've never gotten over that that intro, that intro track. I'm still like head bobbing. I'm like, I love this song. Yes. You like it? Yes. So whoever picked that, uh, it was a great choice, which is uh, me. So Yeah, genius. Anyway. Whoever picked it was just absolutely <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, no doubt there. Well, anyways, where are we at? Well, so um, we've, we've got several things that we were going to chat about today. Um, the first thing that we we're going to do is kind of recap uh, last Friday, unless you had something else you wanted to start with first. Well, I, I'd like to also say the interaction is totally welcome if you guys want to comment in. Um, we even kind of tossed around the idea of adding a Zoom link, but that's kind of dangerous. So if you have any kind of topic throw in that you want to throw in there as well, that's fine as uh, fine also. So. Uh, yeah, start wherever pretty, you want to start. It's to be pretty casual. So, um, as per yes. the title, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, off the cuff, yeah. Yes. So, for those of you who um, didn't know, we um, um, had a brass day last um, Friday, and that included that we had we had quite a few kids that logged in virtually via Zoom. Uh, we did, you know, fundamentals master classes with them. We had. Uh, Con Selmer um, with Lonnie Wagoner, who works over one of the big wigs at Con Selmer, came in and did a presentation on Bach instruments and then um, had a master class with Mark Hughes from the Houston Symphony and, uh, and then just kind of hung out afterwards. Um, I was impressed because Mark hung out with us until like five o'clock. And when so I he think was. We had, him, we had him booked till what, 3 30? And he hung out for an extra hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He just, he just hung out and chatted. And so um, we told this, we told the students, you know, if those of you who wanted to stay, you're welcome to stay. And those of you who need to go, you're welcome to go. But um, yeah, we just kind of hung out online. So I'm, I'm curious to get your opinions. what do you think of the day? Uh, dude, I thought, you know, it's, it's interesting going into something new because there's like this anxiety about what, what's going to actually happen, you know, like, is it going to go over well, or we're going to have connection issues, which actually, as it turns out, I thought 90% of the day was great connection wise. I know you had a little instance where the internet yeah. kind of dropped out a little bit, but, you know, by and large, I thought that it was absolutely the best way to make up for the situation at hand. Um, obviously, these times are completely unprecedented, but I, and I, for some reason, it didn't really cross my mind until I saw it on the the Reynolds Instagram, but it was like, you know what, in the middle of all this, with all the uncertainty, we've been out for four months. Um, you know, we're not even sure how we're going to do video recording for all region, but we actually, it was, it was nice to be able to bring not just a professional musician to these kids, but like top 10 trumpet players in the entire world yeah. to these kids in the middle of a, a big question mark as far as uh, where we're headed. So, um, I, I had a blast myself. Um, I can't wait to do it again. Um, and we've, we've kind of kicked around, Michael and I have kind of kicked around the idea of trying to bring in more professionals and doing this 
uh, either biannually or once a year. Um, also, obviously, next year we hope that we're gonna we're gonna have a camp, a full fledged camp, like we did in 2019. Um, right. But that is to be seen. So I th- <clears throat> I thought it was a great week, and I I or a uh, great day rather. I just enjoyed listening to somebody of that caliber talk, and just know that you know although. Uh, I learned a ton of new information. A lot of the ideas that I'm pressing forth and forth in my kids exact or exactly what he's talking about, which it makes me feel good about my teaching. Right. Um, right. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah be, it, it would be what awkward if he was like, he's like, Oh, your teacher told you to do this. Yeah. Do exactly the opposite of that. That would be, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be horrible. What, what, what did you think about the day? Um, I thought it was, I thought it was a, it was a good day. You know, I, I always go into these things with anxiety because there's a lot of planning. Um, now this was just one day. This was just virtual. We didn't have um, the logistics like, Hey, we have to serve everyone lunch or um, you know, f- all sorts of faculty expenses and performances and this and that setup. Um, and so in some ways there was a lot less preparation ahead of time. Well, definitely than the camp. And that, I think right. that's what I was um, comparing to my head. But man, um, you know, I always go into these things with a lot of anxiety and I didn't have anxiety, which gave me anxiety. Uh, <laughs> it's like, what am I missing? Oh, that, I, should, I should be so freaking funny. out. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I but I thought it went well um, compared to... Um, yeah, I thought it went well. I and I, I've had some really good feedback from kids, um, and uh, you know, I, I've had several students say, you know, Mr. Hughes said that just like what you're saying. Uh, Mr. Hughes said basically what you've been telling me for years, and I said, huh. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. You like kind of brush your shoulder off a little bit. You're like, yeah. That's... Which I mean, I mean that's. That, I think that's a good point to make just quickly while people are listening is that, you know, there's there, in, in life, there's this constant quest to find the answer, you know, like, let's get the person with the in, this, this abounding knowledge, you know, like, what's that one answer that we're all looking for? You know, how do you make more money or how do you live happier lives? How do you have better relationships? It's like a lot of time the answer is right in front of you. It just isn't being said from the right voice, you know? So I, I know that. Right. I can have two people tell me the exact same thing. And when one person says it, I'm like, ah, oh, totally makes sense. And the other person says it, I'm like, uh-huh, sure. Yeah, okay. You yeah. know, so just, it's, it's sometimes you just need to recalibrate and it's, and it's good. I think it's really good for you to take a step back and say, kind of humble yourself. You know, the Tom Landry, this is a football concept. Take a step back, humble yourself, go back to the basics, all those things. And that's, you know, I know that Mark talked a lot, a lot, a lot about phrasing, which is something that I need to be teaching more because um, I'm very uh, kind of by the book, you know, turn the metronome on. Let's make sure that you can play notes and rhythms. So that's kind of taking away from uh, musicality. And I think part of that, when I was thinking about it, part of that was, you know, when it, let's, let's, let's put this out there. It would have been so much cooler to have 15 kids in a, in a concert hall with Mark Hughes working one-on-one, right. On one, right? So for me, when I teach over a computer screen, uh, when sound just doesn't sound that great, no matter who it is, uh, it's hard to, to really talk about musicality and phrasing and all that kind of stuff um, over a Zoom call. So, I mean, just for the record, I cannot wait to get back into the schools and right. teach yeah. teach person to person because there's, there's just no comparison. And until we get these like Star Wars types, you know, where figures just like pop up in our room you know virtual it, it, will, it sounds like what, what it sounds like in real life there's never going to be a comparison to, to in-person lessons being able to play duets hear quality of sound hear phrasing and all that kind of stuff um so and that's that is an interesting thing about this time in, in that um i'm sure you've thought about this too you know um could we just do what we do online and 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 just do that um and I, I've known quite a few teachers that have that have gone online with a lot of their teaching. Uh, Tony Plog, who's in Germany. Do you know Tony? I know that you did a presentation with him in uh, Team EA. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Tony, um, he well, he taught Michael Sachs. Um, oh, he's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so that that was good. Um, I would probably say that too if I taught somebody like Michael. Yeah. Sachs. Tony uh, did a lot of teaching in Los Angeles and and did 
playing uh he played with the la philharmonic some and did studio playing and he's a big soloist he has a bunch of albums out now he's he's in germany um and he taught the freiburg hulk Schule for a long time and also in the oslo conservatory um but you know he's an american living in germany and so he definitely does teaching there in germany but he also teaches all over the world especially a lot in america and so oh, okay. he's done a lot of online stuff and um several years ago when he was starting to launch it he reached out to several of us in the states that did a lot of teaching and said you know what do you do with this how, how do you arrange it um and so anyway i all that to say i've known a lot of people that have gone to online it's been interesting how this time has given us an opportunity all of us an opportunity to really um experiment and see if is that a better way to go or not um and i think yeah. most of us are like what you said um they we've found that it's not quite as 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 good as as the in-person but it's better than nothing right right i would agree with that yeah the, the especially that last statement it's definitely better than nothing and you know i'm going to throw this other factor in there because i thought about this as well would it be more effective um, not necessarily more effective than in person, but would it be more effective if there was a real tangible goal that was one or two months away? Um, so, because the issue that I've run into is, you know, even my best students, some of the people who played for, for Mark are just sort of raising their hands and being like, I don't really know why I'm supposed to be practicing right now. And I had this realization as well, you know, when I was 14 and 15 years old, I obviously wasn't as, as scheduled and dedicated to practice time as I am now. You know, when I was 14 or 15 years old, I just wanted to play Call of Duty all the time, or I wanted to go out and bike right. with my friends and, and have summertime uh, the way that it's, I guess, supposed to be <clears throat> supposed to be lived. So to ask a 14 or 15 year old to have discipline when there is a tangible goal in the near future is hard enough. But you strip all of the, you know, no, no, nothing until December of 2020. Here's three etudes for you to practice for the next five months. Have fun. You know, what, what's going what's gonna to incentivize that kid to, to practice consistently and routinely like we try to preach every single day? Um, it's, it's a tough question to answer. I'm not really sure that there is an answer. Yeah. You know. Well, you, you've talked a lot about intrinsic and ex extrinsic motivation and um, that, that's definitely some of it. It's got, you know, it's developed. It's, it's, it's you know, it comes from within, I think for a lot of us. Um, yeah. But, um, so that's, did you have anything else about the brass day that anything I, that stood I, out? I really, really enjoyed learning about uh, Vincent Bach. I mean, it's nice to, to, to know that one of the most, you know, fame, I played on a Bach, like I told uh, Lonnie, I played on a Bach for goodness, six years. And I absolutely loved it. I mean, I really developed myself as a trombone player on a Bach 42. And yeah. uh, it's, it's nice to know that he was like as entrepreneurial as, as you have to be like, he didn't get a free pass. Um, you know, it's just like listening to Arnold Schwarzenegger's story. It's just it's so inspiring to hear that guy talk. So um, I really enjoyed it. If, if you don't know the history of Vincent Bach, man, look it up. Cause it's, it's pretty incredible. And I think Lonnie did a good job of, of telling that story as well. So. How interesting was it that uh, he came over to America on the, on the, was it the Hindenburg? Was it the Hindenburg? Yeah. No. I think he talked about. Wait, the Hindenburg was the helium blimp, right? Yes. The, the one that went down. The I want to say it's the Lithuania. That's a country. Uh, <laughs> Luc Lusitania. 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 There it is. Gosh. Yeah. Lusitania. <laughs> Hindenburg, yeah. Lithuania, Lusitania. I get there eventually. But yeah, how well, interesting is no, that that he, well, he, no, he, so he, 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 he wasn't brought over here on the Lusitania. Lusitania was, was one of the, it, it says, I'm, I'm looking it up on the internet right now. It says it got sunk okay. by a German U boat. Right. Um, yeah, killing a lot of people. <laughs> well, but so, but he did. He did a. He he came to America on the Lusitania before that incident. Oh, okay. And if he, yeah, I think what Lonnie mentioned is that if Vincent Bach had tried to go a week later, he would have been sunk with the ship, 
and we would never have Bach instruments. That's crazy. I was trying to put two and two together right there, but um, yeah, that's wild. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and, and I mean, just a quick point. I think that's just being able to come to America, just like Arnold Schwarzenegger did and all these, I mean, countless of hundreds of thousands of people who saw, you know, like what Reagan said, you know, America is the shining city on a hill. I'd like to just highlight that. Like, that's a pretty cool thing. Um, yep. So anyway, um, we can either talk marching band or, or, or uh, all state. Well, you know, I, or unless you had something else to cap off. I think that's all I had on the, the camp. Let's, let's go to, let's go to the all state stuff. Um, and then we can kind of talk about school here in a bit. Um, okay. So for those, for those people who are not um, aware, TMEA re- released their all state music this last Monday. And that's on the, the website, TMEA.org. For those people who are listening elsewhere, I don't, I don't know what your system is um, in your state. But I can say that most, I think most states have a similar system to Texas in that um, there's etudes that people learn and they'll compete with them. But this is the season where most states, especially Texas, is starting all of that. And um, so as, as a new student, now that you know what these things, what these etudes are, um, what do you do? You know, what, do you, what would you suggest, Ben? So I've got I've got my own kind of personal method to madness when it comes to uh, the all state process, um, and and the idea is, <clears throat> you know when, and this is kind of interesting because the, the scenario doesn't pan out at the current uh, current situation. I, I I really believe let's say you have etude one two and three that the, if if you are dedicated to learning the music, you <clears throat> it's inevitable that you'll learn the melodic parts of the etude, right? The parts that everybody can kind of sing and recognize. And even the saxophone players can sing the trumpet all state etudes because, you know, the trumpet players are always playing it all the time. You will learn that just because it's happening all the time. But what you're not going to learn are those, you know, two octave arpeggios or those really fast technical licks that take dedicated practice and you can't really sing them because they're so difficult to sing. So what I've got going with my students right now is we are already breaking down. um, I would say there are two very notable uh, stretches of 16th note runs and we're already trying to clean them and run them very slowly. um, And we're going to try to hear them and, and, and be able to sing them. If I played on the keyboard, I want them to be able to sing it as well. So we, I am completely dodging. The, the, the opening licks because the kids are going to learn that they're going to get those down um, just because they're the easiest. It's the most recognizable part of the etude. Um, and, you know, there's this positive feedback loop when you're practicing, you like to feel good when you're practicing, like you're, you're experiencing success. So it's like, we're going to go, my students and I are going straight to the suck and we're going to, we're going to learn it. I mean, that's good. <laughs> nice. That's going to be our favorite part. Straight of the to the suck. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So um, that's, that's, that's my method now. Um, and I mean, to be completely frank, I mean, I need to work on some of these things. It's not easy, you know, a, a two octave C minor arpeggio to play a very clean all the way down from the low to the high notes. It's really good for me to, to be practicing that myself. So um, in fact, I was thinking about putting together, I've got my, my video screen set up here. I was going to actually take, make a video of me breaking down these licks and you know, the dirty little secret is that I'm going to be actually working on it as I'm making the videos. So um, <laughs> that's, 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 that's my method. Um, I'm not sure what your approach is. Well, I, I have a, I have a good idea of your approach, but I'd love to hear your approach. Well, so yeah, I'm, I'm it's similar to what you're doing. I'm, I, I'm breaking the etudes into, I break it. I initially break them into thirds and then we just slow them way the heck down and then gradually speed them up over time. Um, making sure that, especially with the slow tempo, every little detail is in place. The three things that I always stress with the kids that they need to have when learning this music is they need to have right notes, they need to have right rhythms, and they need to have right slurring. Um, as far as dynamics and, and things like that goes, style, um, this is controversial, but I usually add that later. 
Um, I just start by getting the the three those three things right, and then as we bump up the tempo, we start adding some of those <clears> things in. Um, but that's what I'm after. I I tell kids every year. I think I've said it on here. You know, auditions are not about being um, individualistic. They're not about making your imprint on mankind and <laughs> affecting the world with your phrasing and being your you unique snowflake. It's not about that. It's it's. <laughs> can you play what's on the page yeah. and if you can't play what's on the page you won't do all well in the audition it's just it that, that's just it's just that's just reality and um yeah. you know if you consider too that um the judging for these is you get you get a numerical value based upon how you play a certain piece and so if you take that and just this is kind of a sterile approach to music making, but auditions really aren't music making. Right. They're not. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a whole other beast. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if you just take that idea to your advantage and just say, okay, I want to make sure that I get the most points and I make sure that I don't do anything that subtracts points. That's all it takes, you right. know? Um, so anyway, <clears throat> that's how we start. I think this year... And I'm kind of, I'm kind of working through this in my head a little bit. Um, is I think I want to add a little bit more to the process that I give the kids because I give them I give them a set of 36 um, assignments and to work through. And you generally, if they get all 36 done, they'll make region pretty easily. Yeah. Um, but yep. I want something else that pushes the kids into state. Um, and I and we've got I've got to have it so that these kids can know this music second nature. It, it, and yep. and I, I tell them all the time that they have to idiot proof their their auditions. You know, right. if you're playing and your mind goes into La La Land and you're thinking about you know hey that girl over there is really cute. Hey, it kind of smells in here. Hey, it's really echoey or it's really dry or hey it's hot. Hey, what did I have for dinner? Um, you still want to play the music correctly, even if, you know, you become a, a moron while you're playing. Uh, yeah. So, so, so how think, do you, how do you, how do you do that? Well, that's the, that's the magic question. Definitely through mock auditions. And I'd, I already had that part of my system, but I think this year I'm going to add more memorization to the kids. Mm, interesting. I haven't thought about that. Yeah, and you know, you, you don't have to play any of these things memorized. But I think practicing it so that it <clears throat> is memorized makes it more internalized, you know? So you're not worried so much what's on the page. Right. I, I You're not the first person that I've heard say that. I mean, it's, it's you know, memorization. <clears throat> I've heard so many people, including one of Mark's colleagues, Bob Wall. Um, talked about there's there's deeper elements to memorization than just being a show off and playing with no music you know because uh it's just like when you turn off one of your senses all of your other senses get uh kind of enlivened so to speak and so when you're not so focused on you know how does this part go you know how the part goes and you know it inside of yourself you know it inside of your brain um, you, you actually open up the door for you to be able to play more musically. So um, I think that's, I, to me, that is absolutely the icing on the cake. I call it like the connection to, to me as a player and beyond, because when I, when I talk to my kids, and this is going to sound like I'm bragging, this is not bragging. I would be able to make all state. You would be able to make all state. No question. Right. It wouldn't right. even be close because we've been playing for, six or seven years longer than the oldest kid in the room. So what I try to do is I get my kids to the point of approaching my level of playing. And then I ask the question, what is the difference between what I'm doing and what you're doing? Because that's going to bridge the gap. And if you, as a kid can get to, obviously we are way beyond notes and rhythms at any tempo, but if, if you can bridge that gap, that to me, that's, that's the key that unlocks, like you're going to be successful at this competition. I want to ask you though, is the current uh, modus operandi of Allstate going to affect your approach in, in, 
in the all state learning process or are you going to act like everything is exactly the same that is an excellent question so <clears throat> for those who those, for those people who haven't gotten the update um it looks like all tmea activities are going to be recorded through january is that is that right yeah the intent I, I figured out the intent of that date is to say that through area area competitions as well will be video recorded right so my answer is yes and no uh i it's it, i think it's still the same plan um that i would if it's going to be a live audition um okay. But I think I want to do a lot of my teaching where they record assignments every week and send it in. Um, that's been that's been something that I've done with the kids since we've been on lockdown. That's been really beneficial. I mean, they've they've I've you know I have some kids that have kind of stalled um, and haven't really progressed much. But I've had I mean I had a kid here earlier who um, he's going to be a freshman at one of the high schools up here, and um, he was kind of struggling in middle school a lot all of a sudden just he's taken off and i think it's right. a lot of this because he's had to record a lot he's had to mm. sit, go back and listen to it and say oh i sound like that um <laughs> and, which is hum a humbling experience for all levels of players <laughs> right right <laughs> right so yeah. because i mean because the kids are going to be recording i think obviously more recording is going to be important um yeah i'm i'm curious to see if the kids who do record regularly because my 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 policy as a teacher is going to be we're we're probably going to be recording once a week maybe once every two weeks because i want you to get comfortable in front of that blinking red light like i want you to get comfortable saying here we go this is our time to go and we're going to go now um you know obviously that's the entire intent of doing mock auditions is so that when you get into the room you're like i've been here i've done this I can do this again. No, that's not to eliminate all nerves. Cause like Mark talked about, you're going to get nervous. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, I really believe that especially with the recording, because there's always the opportunity. Well, always is a, is a strong word, but there's always the opportunity to, to give another try. There's like a mulligan, right. Which is why, you know, to use a, a golf analogy, when you stand over the ball and you're just kind of messing around with your friends you're not as nervous hitting off the tee box as you are if you're like playing for 20 bucks a hole or whatever so uh right. to me i think it's going to be less about nerves and more about let's not spend three hours trying to get a good take you know let's yeah. let's be able to prepare <clears throat> so it's it's interesting because um i don't think we have the details yet on the recording process because there's all sorts of questions that start to, to, to come up. Like, first of all, recording equipment. But we have, I'm looking at the comments here, Tom Neal's on here, and he was talking about, you know, kids with better microphones may have an edge. Uh, so that's, that's, that's a big question I'm, I'm curious about. And I'm not sure that yep. that situation has been answered yet by TMEA. Um, another one is what you were just talking about is, is what is the actual recording session going to look like? There are some areas of TMEA that already record um oh, okay. and yeah they, and they always have been like when I so I, I was I made area and choir when I was in high school and the what? yeah surprise wow. and um yeah when I That's um awesome. yeah and, and it's interesting because at that point you have like, to you have to choose <laughs> Uh, you like, have to I choose made which area jazz. I made area vocals, No, not jazz. Saxophone. Not jazz. <laughs> but you have to choose. You have to choose which area you're going to compete in because you can only do one. Um, so that that's the rule. But so so here's how choir works: is you walk into a room, just like an audition, and you record your audition. That's how that works. You get one take. So it's just like you're doing a live audition, but it's recorded and then it's sent in and then it's, it's judged. And I think jazz band does the same thing. And they have little play along tracks where you, you walk into an auditorium wherever they're recording 
and they they do the play along track you play along and then it's just it's just submitted to the state um and if that's the case then that means that most likely all the equipment is going to be the same right um i don't i know orchestra they record for all state and i and i i'm i'm about 50 percent sure that this is the case so is it an excellent it's an excellent chance that I'm wrong, but I think they just make a good recording and they submit whatever. And so they can do multiple takes, I think. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be really interested to see what the parameters are for this, you know? Um, Obviously if they don't, if they don't mention, if they don't mention any rules, let's say, let's, let's play out the scenario. Let's say, you know, like to Tom's point, if, if they are just saying, hey, submit a recording to this place on your own, um, there's going to be a lot of kind of pay-to-play ideas floating around where, oh, you know, Johnny A only made Allstate because, you know, his dad's a professional recording engineer uh, or, or whatever, which is going to open up the market to, you know, people who have recording equipment and who are willing to, to record people the logistics of that is kind of a nightmare um, in my, yeah. in my humble opinion. And then there's the other question yeah. of, okay, uh, well, normally all of this happens at once and you've got five judges qualified or not, you know, sitting and listening to uh, people play. So if we do all statewide recordings is, is the fate of all state going to be in the hands of just, one individual judge or five individual judges listening to a tapes, like how there's a lot of questions that TMEA has to answer and they have to answer them like soon um, about what the future holds, you know? Yeah. Hey, we have an interesting comment here. It's not really about what we were talking about, but I wanted to, wanted to read it. Um, okay. It's from Ryan Litton. Do you know that name? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I okay. went to high school with him. Okay. Um, I believe so. He may he may comment on here. Uh, all pissed off if you don't remember him. I I may know him. I <laughs> if I sorry Ryan if if I if I'm supposed to know you and I I, I can't remember you I I apologize. But uh, anyway, he just said just a thought. Uh, but when doing private lessons virtually, I would look into using the platform Discord, mainly used mm. through online gaming community as a means to communicate to one one another. You ever heard of Discord? I've heard of Discord. Um, I know that my students practice until like midnight on Discord, according to their parents. Um, Ryan, if you're still listening, uh, can you kind of explain like what what would be the well, plus delta? So he does here. Okay. 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 What yeah. do you got? Okay. So see, the reason I, I suggest looking into it is because you may have uh, you may hear a slightly better quality of sound as opposed okay. to Zoom. I, he says, I also have a studio grade microphone, which is a Rode NT1 and a Behring, uh, Behringer audio interface. And Zoom seems like it uses its own preamp. So even with my high quality gear, my voice still sounds grainy as if I'm using some Windows 99 microphone. But in Discord, right. it sounds darn near crystal clear. And I have friends who use AirPods and other cheaper affordable audio equipment and still sound much more clear. It's interesting. He also says, well, let's see. A lot of this is just stuff we can read later on. It says Discord is 100% free, uh, super easy to use. So that may be something so, that that we look into. Yeah, I mean, I'm I, obviously I got Brian. I'm rocking the Rode NTG3 uh, and a a Scarlett 18i8 interface. So if I've got that equipment here, and I'm going to be in this setting for the foreseeable future, I don't think it, I think that would be great. And <laughs> to like all of my kids already are on discord. I'm, I would be late to the party. So I'm actually, I might look so what, into what is it? Is it just a, is it a zoom replacement? Is that what it is? I don't, I've never it's, heard of it's, it. It's so from my understanding, it's, it's like you have, you create chat rooms, so to speak. And um, like you can have, I think they do like various hashtags for groups. So you could say like hashtag Michael Attaway studio, Anybody correct me if I'm wrong, because like I said, I've never been on here, but I've seen it before. Um, but I, I, I'm sure you can start. I know you can start video chats because it's it's supposed to be for for gaming. And so, you know, okay. I, I don't know if you've seen the gaming setup, but these people get pretty. I mean, they get really dedicated to their gaming setup. They've got, you know, better backgrounds and closets and trombones and they've got, 
you know, they've got sure SM7Bs all hooked up with their headphones and they, they make me look like a scrub uh, with my setup. So I know that it's, it's mainly used for gaming. Right. Um, but it could also be used like a great platform. I would love to have a shotgun mic, you know, hooked up somewhere right here to where I could play and talk. And it just has that high quality audio with a, a parent. I mean, I've got a, a, an HD camera on front facing camera on mine. So if it makes the screen quality and the audio quality better, I think it'd be a great thing to consider using. So uh, Ryan, I appreciate it very much. Yeah. It's an interesting idea. I may have to check it out. Yeah. So if we're going to be here for a while, <laughs> you know, it's like pulling out Yahtzee. It's like, so, um, anyway, yeah, that's, uh, so, uh, okay. So what, what, uh, where were we with the all region stuff? Did we kind of exhaust that or I was going to ask you, what I know, you I know it kind of went off board a little bit, but what's that? Um, I was going to ask you what you thought of, uh, what you thought of your all, like the quality of the all state music. I mean, I know Marquis picked it. Um, they they are excellent this year. Yeah, they I mean I. Too. Hats off to Joe. Yeah, Jason. I did a great job. It's really a relief to good good hey dudes, uh, because man, some years when they're when they're too easy, or if there's not a lot of um, um. You know, and it doesn't necessarily need to be technically hard. Like you know, Arvin etudes are um, notorious for being really technically difficult but um yeah if there's there's if there's enough musical depth to them so that it, it uh keeps you uh engaged throughout the several months that really makes a big difference and this year we have them it's it's such it was so nice to see these etudes mark hughes did an awesome awesome job picking them and i wish <laughs> i wish we had etudes like that every year um, yeah so uh joe joe dixon did a a, a top-notch job of of uh of picking the etudes i mean just i i saw them as i came out and i was like yes 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 i mean just like perfectly challenging classic all state etudes because i mean it's it's never a dull moment in any of these etudes i mean a lot of it's i think there's a bame there's a blazovich and a belky and it's just like um, I mean, dude, it's, it's, it's awesome. So, um, I'm, I props to props to you, uh, Mr. Dixon. So, um, yeah. anyways, I, we can, uh, do you want to move on to uh, marching band? Yeah. So, um, uh, we, we would be remiss, you know, if we're just chatting here, if we didn't talk about the beginning of the school year. Um, but, um, we don't know have a lot of details. That's that's the yes. big thing here. So none of none of uh, what you take from us is gospel, um, because we have no idea what we're talking about. So just start with that. <laughs> uh, we're not spilling any beans. Which, nothing. By the way, anybody that you listen to politically probably has no idea what they're talking about either. Yeah, uh, I think I think but, hosts are starting to get to the point where they're like, you know what. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's and especially now because and I'm sure private teachers from all over the place are feeling the same way. Uh, there's just been so little opportunity to just sit down and just chat with people in the school systems. Um, yep. that many of us kind of feel in the dark and we're just we're just we don't know. And so we'll watch the news or we'll just kind of hear rumors or this and that. Um, but here's what we know while we're working is that first of all, um, private lessons have been banished from campuses. Ouch. We are the unsullied, <laughs> the ceremonial unclean. Um, Which, nothing new. They just figured it out, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they just figured it out. out. Yeah. Um, you, you so wear shorts in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay. I'm done. So anyway, we uh we will be will be virtual for most of uh, our lessons. I you know we're all, we're able to teach out of our houses. You know I could have kid I I teach in this room actually, so I could have some kids come here. The problem was that the kids are going to be in school, and so it's not like they can just leave school and come here for a lesson in the middle of the day. So there's going to be a lot a lot of virtual lessons um, for a while, and then some after school stuff. Um, 
so that that's what we know first of all second thing that we know is we know that dallas county last night and ben did you see this i'm not sure i don't think i did i haven't read the news today last night clay jenkins of dallas county has just issued an order that has said that all public and private schools in dallas county um, are going to remain closed through september 7th their plan is to start on time but they're going to be virtual for the first three weeks or so of school Um, so that that doesn't look good that that means that all of the extracurriculars that we're going to be gearing up at that part of the year, they cannot do anything. Right. So that's the next thing we know. Now, m- most of us th- that may be on here are listening are not in Dallas County, but they tend to kind of fall like dominoes. So um, mm-hmm. prosperous in Collin County. I live in Denton County. Uh, there's a lot of people in Tarrant County that, that are on here. So um, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what that does. Um, and districts may follow the Dallas County lead, whether they're in Dallas County or not. So that's the second thing we know. The third thing we know is that um, many schools have made it public that they are not having a marching season. Yeah. Keller ISD has many of them have said that. Many of the schools in Frisco have either said they're not having a marching season or they are just going to have the closer of their show. Um, so the best thing that we can do, honestly, is to kind of prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Uh, because school districts are, what right or wrong, they are erring on the side of caution. Right. And so, um, you know, <clears throat> whether, whether there can be a marching season or not, um, they're go- they're going more on the cautious side. So, right. and what, to me, this is is reminiscent of, you know, when they announced the first week of this, well, the week after spring break, they were saying we're not we're not going back to school. And you know, to me, that was the virtual kick of the can down the road. And then it was like, okay, well, we're going to take another two weeks off. And then we're going to take another two weeks off. And by the, by, I think by the second two weeks, we were like, okay, let's just call it. Like, we're not, we're not going to be yep. going back. So to me, this is a completely unfounded prediction. I haven't talked to anybody about this, but what I think is going to happen is they're going to do three weeks. And that I think they're just going to, until the numbers dr- like drastically improve um, as far as people getting, uh, getting COVID-19, coming down with it until the numbers drastically improve i really think they're just going to keep saying that it's not safe they're going to err on the side of caution you could yeah. you could come back four weeks from now and be like nanny nanny boo boo you are wrong and i'll be like okay cool um but I, what i know is that everything that i've seen is completely indefinite and where one one group decides to to you know drop the axe and say we're not doing marching season or we're not going to put on a show um that typically like michael was saying causes a domino effect uh to where it just kind of keeps falling and falling and falling so the other thing that's interesting is that um the so most of the districts are using a a questionnaire system this year where every every day or i think it's every day parents and students and or students are going to have to fill out saying you know, do you have these symptoms? Have you done these things that possibly put you at risk? And uh, I'm not, I think the purpose of the questionnaire, because yeah, of course you could lie, but I think it's the idea of um, keeping you aware that what yeah. you do could have, you know, effects. Um, so that's, that's, it, that, that's, that's, the, that's one thing. The other thing is that the CDC just added some new symptoms of COVID-19. And one of them has to be, Sneezing and a runny nose. Um, okay. And then another one is nausea. My, here's my concern. And I'm, I, I have no idea how we dodge this um, as, a, as a community. I really don't. And I'm, I'm hoping we can work through this somehow. Um, I know for Covenant, where I work, they said that if you have two symptoms, you need to stay home. Well, 
if you have a cough and a runny nose and it's November, what happens in November? Probably a lot of people go home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's flu season. It's allergy season. Um, and so I'm really hoping that we don't shut down because everyone gets allergies. But I unfortunately right. see that as a, a possibility too. Um, and I, I don't know how we dodge that if we're looking at symptoms. I mean, it, or, or, just, or just a cold because you can get a fever if you have a cold. Yeah. Um, so. Well, yeah, that's one of the side effects uh, of, of COVID, no pun intended, is that um, a sneeze like freaks people out now. You know, it's yeah. like we, we've been sneezing for a long time. I don't know if yeah. uh, that's news to anybody, but um, we, and I, and I get it. It's in an overabundance of caution. Um, but I, I mean, I'm just right now, I'm just kind of, I think people are just, have you ever seen uh, Tropic Thunder? No, I, I don't condone the movie. If you're not 17, don't watch it. Ask your parents. Um, because it is, I, I believe it's either PG-13 or rated R. Anyway, there's this scene. It's not even Tropic Thunder. It's it's uh, it's a different Will Ferrell movie. Uh, he's uh, he's passing the ball. It's it's two people playing basketball, and Will Ferrell and this other character are like, "Here, you take it," <laughs> and then he catches the ball. He's like, uh, "Okay, you know, you take it." And they just keep passing this ball back and forth, and eventually the shot clock runs out, and they're like yelling at each other. But like that's how I feel like all of the higher ups who are making these decisions for us are like, uh, I don't know, the three week delay start. They're like, uh, <laughs> two symptoms, <laughs> you know? Right. No one actually wants to. And now to, to their, to, to be fair to them, I do not envy whoever has to make that decision. You know, I don't. Yeah, the reality that. is that no matter what decision they make, someone is going to be really upset and really mad. Yeah, yeah um that, that that is absolutely the case so i think i think as educators and as people that you know hopefully are going to be kind of leading we probably want to well hope for the best expect the worst but tackle this next school year as a new adventure because we're going to yeah. get through this um it's not going to be the year that we think it's going to be. Unfortunately, we know that we know that right now, it's not going to be the year that we originally thought it was going to be, but um, we'll get through it. And if people are, are focused, if they have a good attitude, if they, if they continue just to, to be disciplined and do work and, and, and do joyful work, I think we can get out of this ahead of where we were. I think that's um, right. It's those people. Yeah. It's those people that just kind of sit and just, kind of have a pity party because man I, I, I didn't get to do this that I normally get to do and you know um that's that's where things and that's where things go and then the last thing the, and then I'll pass it to you oh go okay. ahead sorry well oh, I was just gonna the say last the, the easy route we're good at this ready I'll go yeah we the are easy, that the your e, the easy route is wallow in pity everything stinks the tough route and and the I think the more appropriate, more righteous route would be to say, you know, we're gonna do it, we're gonna make a, a positive thing out of this. It's so easy to feel sorry for yourself, you know, and, and I would caution against that because that will snowball in your life. Um anyway, I like triple interrupted you. Uh, it's okay. I mean the la the last point I was gonna make, and we probably need to wrap up, but um I would highly recommend Anyone who's listening, anyone who really take, uh, I, ho I hope you take this to heart. It's better to live your life with a sense of hope and faith rather than fear. And it's really easy to um, listen to news, listen to other people, and just be in this realm of I'm afraid all of the time um, about what's going on in the world. And it, that, that doesn't help anyone in fact there's even the medical research to say that if you are afraid or if you do have a lot of anxiety or stress your immune system gets worse but 
even just just being um just living a happy life man everything's going to turn out okay mm-hmm. avoid fear and live with hope and faith so yeah because i you know if, if you think coronavirus is the last scary thing that's going to happen to you in your life it's like you've got you've got another thing coming uh, there's always going to be something to be fearful of and that's you know that's to your point, uh, that's how the media is a multi-billion dollar industry by, by scaring you, you know, um, that's how advertising most of the time works. Um, FOMO is the fear of missing out, you know, so there's always something that you could focus your brain on. Um, just focus in physiology, you know, stand tall with your shoulders back, uh, you know, like Jordan Peterson talks about. So, uh, I agree with you hundred percent. And I'm doing my absolute best in this time to stay positive and to to keep not only all of my students' balls rolling forward, but mine as well. It's just like, let's just keep moving forward. Let's just keep going and going and going and going. Um, and uh, to make to make the best of, of the current situation. So um, hopefully next week we'll be back with a, a new guest. Um, it's always, as always, it's to be seen. We, we do this on a weekly basis. We always, uh, really, Michael schedules the guest, and, and we go from there. So, um, we'll I dropped the ball this we week. Do. You're probably busy. That's probably what it is. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> you, have, uh, you have other stuff going on in your life. <laughs> Look a few things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's fun. I think this is a good conversation to have. Anyway, it's good. Uh, good checkup. It's funny. Pre 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 podcast, we were saying, let's just do like. 30 minutes and here we are like an hour later <laughs> it's like apparently right. some stuff to talk about so all right well over and out from the dfw area all right peace out peeps